I have another headlamp I want to give share with you today. Today it is the Lumentop BR1. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. Just before we get started, I want to thank the company Flashlight Brand for sending me the Lumentop BR1 so that I could share it with you. So what we'll do, as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this light. I'll go over its physical and performance specifications, as well as its modes of operation. Then, of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. Just before we take a closer look at the Lumentop BR1 headlamp, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So this is the box the light arrived in, uh, types of information about the light. Now, the other thing that was kind of unique about this is it came in this hard shell carry case. I don't know how many people will continue to carry it in this, but it is a nice option to keep everything organized as well as protecting the light. Inside of the case, I have the manual and warranty information as well as the USB type C charging cable. Let me put those out of the way. And then the last thing I'll show you before we look at the light is this business card from the company Flashlight Brand. And they asked me to share this with you so that you can be aware of a 10% cash back offer by going to that site and seeing how to claim that. All right, let's bring the light back into the picture. So let's go over a few of the key features. Now, the thing that makes this light stand out is the fact that it is a motion activated for hands-free operation. So you can either set it for manual operation using the on-off button. I'll share with you how that's done in a minute. Or you can turn it into a hands-free operation where you just wave your hand in front of it and turn the light on and off. It has a, both a spotlight and a floodlight dual light design. It has a max output of 440 lumens with a beam distance of 100 meters. I like the fact that I discovered that you can actually take the light off of the head strap. So if you wanted to mount it on a chest strap of a backpack or something else that you can do so, it has the split design here to allow you to do that. It does, of course, have a USB type C charging port, which is at the bottom of the light. Interestingly, it has heat sinks built in, aluminum heat sinks built in on each side of the light. I'll talk about those when we get to the operation of the light to talk about their effectiveness. All right, let's go over the physical specifications for this light. So it comes in at 6.2 ounces, which is 175.8 grams. Certainly not an ultra light light, but still not too heavy at all. The dimensions are in this direction, 2.44 inches, which is 62 millimeters. In this direction, it is 1.69 inches, which is 42.9 millimeters. And thickness through is 1.49 inches, which is 37.8 millimeters. It does have an IPX5 waterproof rating. There is no indication in the literature about a uh, drop resistance. It does have an 1800 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery built in. So a little different from the lithium ion batteries in many of the other lights. All right, let's take a look at the performance specifications for the BR1. And just before I do, I want to show you that it does come with three LEDs, the center one being for the spotlight with one on either side of that for the floodlight. So the performance specifications for the spotlight are a medium setting of 100 lumens, which will last for eight hours and cast out to 55 meters. At high, the spotlight will come in at 330 lumens, which will last for 3.7 hours and have a beam cast of 99 meters. If you combine the spotlight and and the floodlight, you'll reach the max lumen setting of 440 lumens, which will last for 2.5 hours and cast the beam out to 100 meters. Now, if you just want to use the flood, the flood has a low setting of 120 lumens, which will last for 7.7 hours and a beam cast of 16 meters. And there is a low setting for flood of 10 lumens, which will last for 70 hours and will have a beam cast of five meters. All right, just before we go through the operation of this light, I thought I'd give you a few close-ups so you can see some of the detail of it. So there's the on-off button and the mode button. So the on-off button addresses all the lumen settings and combination of lights. 
The mode button really only addresses the hands-free operation, which we'll demonstrate in a few moments time. And you can see on either side, the aluminum heat sinks that protrude out through the side. I don't know that they're necessary, but we'll talk more about those in a minute. On the bottom of the light, you can see where the USB Type-C charging port is, and right beside it is the battery status indicator. The light does have about a 45 degree angle uh, adjustment through multiple different settings. And if I wasn't able to show this well before, I wanted to show you again how you can remove the adjustable head strap from the light if you wanted to mount it onto something else. All right, now let's go into the operation of the light. As I mentioned, everything is operated from the on off button. Now, just before I begin, I wanna point out how this works. If I press the light quickly, the light will come on. If I continue to press the button, then the light will cycle through each of the settings. Now, the light does not have a memory, but if you want to turn the light off at any given time without running through all the settings, then you have to press and hold. So I'll demonstrate what I mean by that now. So I'll turn the light on. It'll come on in low spot, high spot, combination spot and flood, low flood, or high flood, low flood, and then off again. Now, let me just turn the light on. If I wait three seconds, and then press it, it'll turn itself off and I can turn it back on. Otherwise, it will just rotate through all of the settings on this light. All right, let's talk about the motion sensor uh, mode for this light. So you can see just below each of the floodlight LEDs, there are two small dots. Those are the motion sensors. And to activate the motion sensors, you first have to turn the light on. So I'll turn the light on then press the mode button for the motion center. And now you can run your hand in front of it and the light will turn on and off. Now, what it won't allow you to do is to move through each of the uh, low, high flood combinations. But if you wanna do that, you can do that again by just pressing the light will turn off, on, get it to maybe where you want it there. Again, press that button and now it'll operate in just moving the light on and off. All right, having gone over the physical and performance specifications as well as the modes of operations for the Lumen Top BR1 headlamp, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to get outside and do some testing. So I'm doing some nighttime testing for the Lumen Top BR1 headlamp, and I'm next to the foundation of my home where I wanna show you the pattern before for turning the camera around to show you what it does at distance. So turn it on, low spot, high spot, flood and spot that's flood only and that's low flood all right let's turn the camera around into the backyard so the depth of my yard is about 60 feet away let's see what we do low spot high spot yeah that's pretty good eh? spot and flood and just one two three got to get down to the lowest that's low flood so that barely registers it's fine around my feet gives me a good wide beam but it doesn't penetrate very far all right let's see if we can close this video out with a few thoughts on the lumen top br1 headlamp so what is it about this light that make it really stand out to me Honestly, nothing. And I know that sounds a little funny to say, but there is no single feature about this light that make it stand out that much from all the other headlamps that are out there. However, when I looked at this light in its totality and I considered all the features it does have, I considered its performance specifications and the quality of its construction, then compared that with the asking price, I've determined this is actually quite a high value headlamp, well worth looking at. Now, you know, Lumen Top is not a well-known brand name, but it really certainly should be, and I think you're going to hear more about this. Uh, this, I think, is the third light from Lumen Top that I've tested, and I'm certainly going to be looking at more because they tend to have a lot of great value built into each of these things. Now, one thing I'll talk about is the motion sensor on this light. You know, um, I don't see that as a great plus for it. You may see it, so uh, something I will likely use from now, from time to time, but not having it wouldn't be a deal breaker for me. It's a nice plus, but it's not something that by itself would sell this light for me. Okay, those are my thoughts on the Lumen Top BR1. I will, of course, put all the information I have in the video description below. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on this light. If you have any thoughts or questions, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, 
Get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.